So before we start this video, I just wanted to let you guys know that I still have a few Inktober zines left and the sales for those zines will only be continuing through the end of November. So if you would like to pick up a zine, please do so before December 1st, because on December 1st, I will be making a donation to the nonprofit organization that the zines will be benefiting. So you've got a little over a week left to pick one of those up and a huge, huge thank you to everyone who has purchased a zine so far. I'll be letting you guys know at the end how much money we've raised, so thank you. Alright, let's get started. Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today I have some watercolors to review for you and these are the Paul Rubens watercolors. I had actually never even heard of this brand before the company contacted me and asked if I would be interested in reviewing some of their products. To be honest though, this isn't the initial unboxing of these paints. When I got them, I quickly unboxed them and took the wrappers off, stuck them on this piece of paper, the pamphlet that came with the paints, and took them with me on vacation. While most of the labels for these paints are in Chinese, you can see over there on the left side that the pigment information is actually on each label for each color. Out of the 24 colors, 20 of them are single pigment colors. And the other number that you can see in the second row there is the light fastness. So these paints have a light fastness rating scale of one to eight. Most of these paints are in between six and eight as far as light fastness with eight being the highest degree of light fastness. The paints come in this pink metal tin, which I actually really like the color of and when you saw them in the box they were wrapped up in this sort of chamois cloth thing that I guess you could use to clean out the palette but it's so pretty that I actually don't want to get it dirty so I'll probably just use it to keep the tin safe if I continue to put the paints back in the box. Here you can see the actual half pans themselves. I wanted to show you that the size and shape of these half pans are actually kind of unique. I'm not really used to seeing this particular shape in a half pan. Here they are next to my Schmincke half pans. You can see that these corners are a bit more rounded. And when we compare that to Windsor and Newton half pans, you can tell that the Paul Rubens half pans on the right are much, much rounder. The shape is a bit different. And when I turn them on their sides, you can see that while the Windsor and Newton kind of bevels in and is smaller at the bottom, this one is pretty square. So some of your palettes, like if you have a portable painter or something like that, these Paul Rubens paints would not fit in there. As with most metal tins of this style, you can remove the tray where the half pans sit and, you know, use that space if you wanted to. These paints did come with a little chart of watercolor paper for swatching out all of the colors and you can see the color number and the light fastness and pigment information right there from that chart. In my bad dream, there was dinosaurs. Oh my goodness. What were those dinos doing? The dinos were in Pennsylvania. And they were going like all around Pennsylvania destroying the houses. Oh no. But I was okay, and so were you guys in that dream. Well, it's good that we were all okay, at least, huh? Yeah. We were running outside, and do you know why the dinos were chasing us? Why? And they were destroying the houses to get rid of the people. Oh no. But we were okay. And 
we got outside and we were warning our friends of the dinosaurs. And that's the end of my bad one. Oh, okay. So I found that these paints actually activate very, very well. I did spray them a little bit, but by the time I actually got to painting with them, they were mostly dry. And even outside of that, I have found that these paints reactivate super easily. And the color is actually pretty nice. Along with the watercolors themselves, the company that distributes these products on Amazon also sent me a brush and some watercolor paper. So the brush is a quill brush. I'm actually not 100% sure if it's synthetic or natural hair. I'll check and let you guys know. The brush itself is a size 4, and I noticed that some of the bristles kind of got cut caught under the ferrule when it was being made. It doesn't really impede the functionality of the brush, just something that I noticed. The watercolor paper itself came on this fairly large block. And has a cold pressed texture that looks like this. I'm very, very excited to be getting back into painting pieces, especially example pieces like this with watercolors. It's just something that I've missed a lot. Here you can see the size 4 brush compared to the size of the 5 size 4 Princeton Neptune brush. It's smaller than the Princeton Neptune, even though they both claim to be size 4. I know that Neptune is something that some people might be a bit more familiar with, so I wanted to compare those sizes for you. For this piece itself, I am going to be exclusively using these Paul Rubin supplies, so I'm going to be using so I'm going to be using this brush with the Paul Rubens paper and the Paul Rubens paint for the entire piece. And I would say that the brush and the paint performed fantastically. I actually really enjoyed both of them. I've had nothing but pleasant experiences working with this paint. I've also done some work in my sketchbook with the paints. And to be honest, I was really, really surprised by how pigmented they were, and the overall quality of the paint was just really surprising, especially when considering the price of these paints. So on Amazon, these paints are currently listed at $38.99, and when you compare that to, for example, like the core half pan set that only has 12 colors, that's like $68, almost $70 on Amazon, and of course then like a Schmincke half pan set with 24 colors is going to cost you like $200 US dollars. So when you compare that to the $40 that this set costs, it's actually pretty cheap for the number of colors. I was expecting these to remind me of like Arteza paints or some other student brand paint that while they worked and they functioned well enough, I wasn't expecting the quality to be that great. But I was really surprised by these paints, guys. I mean, while I will say that some of the versions of these colors are not necessarily my favorite, so for example the cadmium red light, it uses PR108, which is the pigment I'm used to seeing for cadmium red light. I actually don't like this particular version of it very much, it's a bit too orange, and there's also a Payne's Gray in here that uses slightly different pigments, and it's not my favorite Payne's Gray, it actually reminds me a bit more of an indigo. And while some of these specific colors may not be my favorite versions that I've ever tried, Tried. I think that if this set of watercolors was the only one I had, you could basically do anything with it. I found that 24 colors is enough to make me feel spoiled in that I feel like I have a large variety of colors to choose from, while at the same time I'm not being overwhelmed by like 30 plus colors, like in a larger set where I wouldn't necessarily know which colors to use, or I would use too wide of a palette and my colors wouldn't be very cohesive. So I find that 24 colors is actually a really nice number. That being said, I'm not 100% happy with the balance of this palette, as some of the yellowy, orangish colors I don't really see myself using very often, and I think that those slots could have been better selected for me. I think that this watercolor set could make a fantastic gift for someone who is getting into watercolors, or someone who doesn't have a very large collection, someone who's looking for something affordable, or if you already have some paints and you're just looking for something new to try. 
I have a few friends who are interested in art and maybe thinking about getting into watercolors, and I think this would be the perfect gift to get for someone like that who is looking to get started with watercolors but doesn't want to deal with the hassle of products that are going to be really difficult to use because they're poor quality. These paints definitely stand up and compare well to other professional brands that I've used, to be honest. They're not going to have some of the finesse and luxury granulation of Daniel Smith or that creamy luminosity of Schmincke paints, but to be honest, I actually really, really like them, and these are going to be the paints that I will travel with. So whenever I go somewhere, I'll take these paints with me, partly because they're affordable, so I'm not going to be too stressed about losing, you know, $100 worth of paints or something like that if something were to happen to them. But they're reliable. I mean, the colors mix really well, and I was really happy with them. And I also really liked this brush. The one thing that I wasn't super happy with was this paper. I found that this paper didn't handle tons of layers the way I wanted it to, which is something that I do a lot of. I love layering with my watercolors, and it's really, really crucial for the way I like to work. And I've definitely had paper that worked better. I found that some of the areas where I did lots and lots of layering, it felt like the colors were getting kind of muddy, and I was really nervous about pushing my values with this piece and getting some areas really, really dark because I didn't want to further muddy those areas. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't do a ton of layering, the paper functions really nicely overall and it works well, but when it comes to doing lots and lots of layers, this may not be the best option. But even then, I can't bring myself to dislike this piece because the softness of it I do really enjoy. Overall, I can highly recommend that you guys check out this set. Maybe if you only have a 12 color set from Cotman or Van Gogh or something like that and you're looking to upgrade without spending a ton of money, this is a fantastic option. I find myself looking forward to using this set whenever I'm trying to decide which paints to use. It doesn't have my favorite Naples yellow, but that's okay. Yellow ochre and a cool yellow, those two are also great options. Here in my sketchbook, you can see how these colors kind of react on different paper. This is the Handbook & Co. paper, so it's not premium cotton paper or anything, but the colors do look more vibrant, so the difference in paper does seem to make quite a big difference. You can find the original piece here for sale up on my shop, and I'm going to have prints available of this one as well. I'll leave links to all of these products down in the description if you guys would like to check them out. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and i will see you all actually in a couple days okay bye bye